Hello friends, welcome back to another video. And I know I've been promising you a house tour, so <sighs> I'm gonna give you one. Okay, so before you get all upset in the comments, I'm not gonna give you a full house tour today. I'm gonna give you a mini house tour. Like I said, I know I have been promising you a house tour, but there are a few things that we are still waiting on, mainly our freaking dining room table. So CB2, hurry it up, time's a ticking. And we are doing a few more final touches in the dining room that aren't complete either. So really the dining room is the only thing that is preventing us from doing a full, complete, in-depth, furnished house tour. In today's video, we are going to be talking about how to make a space that isn't perfect, perfect for you, um, how to update a dated space, how to do it for fairly cheap, renter friendly. Before we get started, like I said, the full house tour is coming soon. So this is a great opportunity to click that subscribe button, do it now, it takes 0.5 seconds, and you can help us toward our goal of getting to 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So I'm just gonna take you around my house, very casually show you some finished spaces, and let you know some things that we did to make this house perfect for us. So if you know me, and if you've watched our channel for a while, you know that I have OCD. In order to have a healthy and enjoyable space, living environment, I need things to have a place. I need it to be organized. I need it to fit my aesthetic because if things get cluttered or something doesn't match or a piece of furniture looks old and dingy, like it, it messes with my brain and I can't let it go. I fixate on stuff like that and I just stress all the time about it having to be perfect. In this house that we're in, I will link the empty house tour here so you can see the bare bones of what it looks like. It was built in the 1980s and it's been extremely, extremely well maintained, kept super clean, but it's still dated. It has some dated elements that I wouldn't choose today if I were you know, able to renovate the entire house. And so I worried about that presenting a challenge with my brain and my OCD of me not feeling like it can be a space that I'm proud to live in and that I can't get the look that is really important to me. And I just wouldn't feel you know, at ease or happy about the design or the look or the feel of our space because those things are very important to me. So that was a huge worry of mine. And since moving in and since being able to attack that challenge of trying to make this dated space perfect for us, we're loving this house even the dated elements of it. And our decor has just really dressed it up. I've had so much fun decorating it all. My dad has helped a lot because he's been here in Oklahoma and we love doing that kind of stuff together. I totally get my design and aesthetic from him. And it's just been the most fun challenge. And I'm really proud of how we've transformed the space and just made the most of it. So I have just really been embracing this idea that everything doesn't have to be perfect and that I can live in a space and be happy with this space and really take pride in a space without having to change every little thing that I don't like about it. And it's been such a freeing experience just embracing this house and really loving it, loving where we're at and not fixating on all the tiny little things that yes, I would change if I owned the home, but those things actually aren't that important and you can do so many creative things to make your space work for you without having to compromise your style and your design. And man, it's just been so nice. It's been so nice to live in this house and feel like it's our house, it feels like us. It's got a very unique design. It's funky and cool and we very much embraced the dated aspects of it. And we're loving living in this imperfection, which I always thought was something I would be too uptight to do. but. I found that that's simply not the case and I am so enjoying living in this imperfect home that's kind of perfect for us. So all that babble to say, I'm excited to show you how we have changed some of these spaces, made the best of them, and kind of give you some tips on it. if you're living in a home that has a little bit of a dated aspect or maybe you're a renter and you can't change you know that much about it but you still want to update something here and there or maybe you don't have a lot of budget but you know you want to see something that has worked for me that didn't cost a lot of money at all i'm going to kind of show you everything today 
and it'll work as a little mini house tour, a little tease before the real thing. So without further ado, I know I've talked for a long time, but let me show you some of these spaces that I am just loving in the new house. Okay, so first up, my first tip is to use big area rugs. If you have carpet that may be kind of old, stained, just not super up to date design wise even, which we have very unoffensive carpet. It's dated, it's old, it's kind of creamy. I don't know if it was originally white or not, but it's in really great shape. It's been cleaned a lot and it's just kind of a blank canvas. I would want hardwood in all of the main living area, but you know what? It's got carpet. So I, my solution to that was to get big area rugs to fill as much carpet and cover as much carpet as possible. And since we're renters, that also helps with, you know, covering a big majority of the carpet to keep it protected from, you know, if the puppies come in and it's muddy outside and they drag in some paw prints or if something spills. So here in our living room, we've got this huge 12 and a half by 15, Turkish rug that was actually imported from Turkey. I found it on Facebook Marketplace for a steal of a deal and it's like my favorite thing in my house. I love it so much. And it just makes this living room vibe come together. It is so like 1970s, just, mm, I love it. Let me show you this living room. Look at this space. I just love how it's come together. It has got the most vintage vibe. But do you see how much room this rug takes up. It covers so much of the carpet and it is gorgeous. Like look at all these colors, the amazing detail of it. I got it secondhand on Facebook Marketplace. It's in incredible condition and it just sets the whole tone for this living room. I love it so stinking much. Also, don't mind that piece of dog food on the carpet. Another giant area rug that I've got is this one here in the dining room, which as you can see, no dining table. <laughs> um, we have got a couple things left to do in the dining room, so I'm not gonna show you the whole thing, but look at the colors of this one. I love the pinks and the teals. Ugh, so, so fun. So this one is also a real vintage Turkish rug. Amazing, got it secondhand as well and it just fills the space so nicely. Like imagine if this space were just white carpet, like it would just be so boring, but you add these amazing rugs and it really helps transform the space. So that is my tip number one, use big rugs. Okay, another super good tip is to paint accent walls. Obviously, if you're a renter, you need to get permission before you do this and we have gotten permission, but painting accent walls can really help the vibe that you're going for in the room and just add a nice fun pop of color a contrast and literally a can of paint is 20 bucks. So it is so inexpensive. We have in our kitchen, I'll show you the full view in a second, but we have a very vintage vibe going in the kitchen. We've got pink countertops, which I'm obsessed with. <laughs> like, I don't even think if we could renovate this whole house, I don't even know that I would change these pink countertops because I love them that much. Eric might disagree, but it's a very vintage vibe in here. So we painted an accent wall back here and it just makes the whole kitchen look super vintage. And it was a very inexpensive, easy, not time consuming thing. And when we move out, we'll just paint it back white again. So let me show you the full wall. Look at how fun that green is. You mix it with the pink countertops and all the red in here. It just really is exactly what this space needs. And we carried it down into this little pantry hall as well that goes out into our sunroom. So it's just, oh, it helps brighten the space. It helps provide a nice fun contrast. It helps us lean into the very vintage feel of this kitchen and we're just really loving it. In fact, I'm loving it so much that I think I'm going to take either the same color green or maybe a couple shades lighter of the green color and paint all of this paneling around this little breakfast nook in here because I just think that'll help tie it in so nicely. Another thing I wanna talk about, my third tip is lean in. If you're going for a retro look, go to antique malls, go to vintage stores, go thrifting and try to find things secondhand that are old and, and totally fit the retro feel you're going for. For us in the kitchen, we decided to use classic kitchen red, 1950s-esque appliances. So for all of our appliances that are out, like our toaster and our mixer and our coffee maker, we did bright red and that really helps kind of give a nice pop, but also a very vintage feel. So we didn't shy away from the more vintage elements of this kitchen. We're encouraging it by using decor that 
kind of fits that vibe. So you can see, we've got a cute little coffee bar over here, which Eric has clearly used this morning because not all of the supplies are put away. We've got our cute toaster over here, and then we've got our KitchenAid mixer over here. So they create some really nice pops of color and pull in that vintage vibe. I love that so much. And on the topic of leaning in to whatever design you're going for, don't be afraid to use like fun furniture. We have this 1960s, I think, fully wood wrapped sofa that I got at a secondhand store for I think like 400 bucks. And how perfect is it as kind of banquette seating in this little breakfast nook area. Same goes for in here in the dining room. I found these incredible, incredible reupholstered chairs that are just so beautiful. So, so beautiful. Oh, and one more thing. Okay, this is one of my favorite things in the house. This is a lamp that I Mm, maybe stole, maybe asked permission, don't know. My dad just brought it home, so probably stole from my grandparents. It is a 1970s lamp, and it is just the perfect little accent for right here. My grandparents have probably owned it for, well, since the 1970s. It literally still has the original moth clip on it. Do you guys even know what this is? I didn't know what it was until my dad explained it to me. But man, you can't get any more vintage than that. And it just totally completes this living room. I love it so much. Another tip, use additional lighting like this lamp, like this amazing screen that we've got back here that I bought from an antique store in Oklahoma City. We've got it. You can't really tell right now, but we've got it lined with LED strips. And so at night, it just glows so pretty in whatever color we wanna put it in. And it really highlights the cutouts of this really cool screen. And it also provides additional lighting to really brighten this room up. So same goes in the dining room. We've got these amazing lamps from West Elm that I actually stole from Eric, LOL. They were in his office, but they just fit perfectly in here. So they'll provide us some extra lighting. And speaking of additional lighting, we have these adorable sconces in our bedroom over each of our side tables that help provide more light in here. And that brings me to my next tip, which is if you have windows that are kind of dated looking, just cover them up. It is the easiest, cheapest solution. And look how much taller our bed looks and this wall looks because it's kind of got the elevation of the curtains. Another example of this is in our lovely bathroom above the bathtub. We have these very dated looking glass blocks for the window, but we have this very cheap paper blind that just kind of erases the blocks. Still lets the light through, but we are able to kind of mask the look of that for, I think maybe like 15 bucks on Amazon was how much these paper blinds are. Not a forever solution, but a good for now solution that's cheap and easy. Next tip is to use a bunch of art. Cover the walls in art. This one is a feminist retelling of The Last Supper. My parents gave this to me for my birthday a few years ago um, when they took a trip to Puerto Rico. They brought this back from Puerto Rico for me, so I love this piece of art. This is a vintage brass serving tray that I got, actually on the same shopping trip that I got those chairs on. This piece is by a local artist, Leanne Henry Wright. There's some more Leanne prints there. We've got a cool vintage looking mirror, but it's actually from West Elm, you know, my favorite place on earth. We've got our giant blue painting there. We've got a cool mirror here. I actually got this at Home Goods of all places a while ago with my mom. It used to be in our bedroom, but it worked perfectly above the mantle in here. In the kitchen, we've got our portraits of our puppies. I don't like to do a lot of prints of famous artwork, but I just really love this specific one. So we have it hanging here. In our bedroom, we've got these cool prints from a local artist on Etsy. We've got some cool shelves here. And then in my cute little office, I've got some very like personalized decor and art hung. I've got my bulletin board over here. So not only does art provide a very personalized touch to your home, but it also helps give the eye something else to look at besides maybe the dated things you don't want the eye to go to. So for example, the one thing that I really don't like about this house is the trim. I don't like the wood stain. I don't like the dated look of the type of trim they've used. I don't love the doors. Like that's just not my favorite thing to look at, but that stuff kind of blends and goes away, especially when you've got beautiful art on the wall to look at and a beautifully designed home. Those things are very much masked 
and kind of just blend. You don't really look at those. They don't stand out as much because they're much prettier, nicer things to look at throughout the house. So there are just a few tips for what I've done to really transform this space, make it feel cozy and comfy and like us but still stylized and elevated and a design that I'm happy with and makes me feel good to live in. And I've done it all without spending a lot of money, without making any sort of permanent changes to the home that I don't own. So I wouldn't want to invest any of my money into. And I'm really happy with how it's come out. Like I said, it has just given me such a free mindset. You know, it's made me realize that I can be so happy and I can love a space so incredibly much without it having to be perfect. And honestly, it kind of takes the pressure off. It makes it feel more lived in. It makes it feel more welcoming and open and real, you know? And so it's really been a transformative process, this whole entire move, not just renting this kind of dated house that isn't perfect and transforming it and making it a fun, exciting place to live, but also just like personally getting back involved in our community with our people and, getting back involved at the theater that's meant so much to me my entire life and Eric as well throughout our entire relationship and spending a lot more social time with our friends. It's just been really, really good, really good. So I hope this has been helpful to you. If you don't care at all about any of these tips and you're like, yeah, whatever, Miley, I just wanted to see your house. I hope you enjoyed the mini house tour. Stay tuned because hopefully the furnished house tour is coming very soon and I will give you an in-depth look at absolutely everything. I'll open all my drawers and cabinets for you. Just kidding, no, I won't, but I'll show you an in-depth look soon. Until then, thank you guys so much for watching as always and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.